long before the era of upheaval, the formidable frost giant Jarl Kelvin Dwarl acquired the Krenshinabon, an ancient and malevolent artifact crafted by seven powerful liches in alliance with the demon lord Ertu. This artifact, initially brought to the distant continent of Zahara, held immense power. Kelvin sought to utilize the Krenshinabon to establish a new frost giant kingdom atop the ancient ruins of Astoria, but met with failure. His ambitions drew the ire of the god Tempest, who ultimately slew Kelvin and buried him beneath a mound of stones in the snow-covered lands. The floating Netherese city of Ithran was ruled by the Netherese arcanist Heriolarthus and a cabal of eight known as the Wizards of the Ebon Star. Similar to other enclaves of Netheril, Ithran relied on a singular Mithalar for power. This magical core enabled the city's ability to fly and replenish its expended magical energies. The enclave was situated on a large circular platform upon which stood its various irregular towers and turrets alongside shorter domed buildings. Encircling the outer edge of the platform were 14 wizard spires resembling claw-like structures extending beyond the city's perimeter. Ithran's necropolis served as a safeguard for the Mithalar, defended by a tomb tapper to ward off intruders. It also harbored a magical affliction called arcane blight, gradually transforming living beings into shadowy creatures. The inhabitants of Ithran predominantly dedicated their time to arcane studies or indulged in lives of abundance and pleasure, lacking significant desires or needs. Their scholarly pursuits focused on uncovering knowledge of the lost giant realm of Astoria. In its prime, the city boasted a renowned orchestra known throughout Toril and a stadium where chain lightning matches were held. Chimeric pets, particularly winged hares, were popular among its citizens. When Eriolarthus and his apprentices activated the city's Mithalar for the first time, lifting it into the skies, they journeyed to the region of the continent later known as the North. Their quest was to uncover ancient magics from Astoria. In negative 343, the Arcanists of Ithran retrieved a large stone spindle adorned with unfamiliar symbols from the depths of the Sea of Moving Ice. Experimentation with the spindle resulted in an unintended surge of power, disabling their Mithalar and causing the city to plummet from the sky. During the catastrophe, one of the wizard spires broke off and crashed into the tundra of Icewind Dale. The impact of the city crashing into the Regged Glacier drove it deep beneath the icy surface. After its descent, the evil nature goddess Arl encased the ruins in ice, asserting her dominion over the new acquisition. The remaining survivors found themselves trapped within this frozen tomb, with conventional escape routes blocked by ice and magical means hindered by the spindle's lingering effects. The spire had crashed in a region known now as the Frozen Far, one of the most inhospitable lands in the world of Toril. It lacks clear boundaries, its definition varying among the people across Faerun. For instance, in Am and the Inner Sea regions, it encompasses Mirabar and areas extending north, including the Spine of the World Mountains. Some even broaden its scope to include all the Northlands where travelers risk freezing to death. In the North, however, it strictly denotes lands beyond the Spine of the World, a widely accepted usage. Mithril Hall stood as a dwarven fortress beneath the Fourth Peak Mountain in the Frost Hills, situated within the Spine of the World. Renowned throughout Faerun, it was amongst the most famous dwarven strongholds in the realms. While the exact founding of Mithril Hall remains uncertain, it predates the year zero by the Dale Reckoning and was established by Gondalug Battlehammer. Initially established as a mining operation due to the abundant mithril ore, the hall swiftly evolved into a bustling community. Its true location was a secret to outsiders, with the dwarves conducting all their trade on the surface to maintain secrecy. During the late 1100s, the dwarven miners breached a shadowy cavern 
connected to the Plane of Shadows, inadvertently releasing the formidable shadow dragon, Hyrin Vurim, known as Shimmer Gloom. Assisted by legions of shadow creatures and Dwergar, Shimmer Gloom unleashed devastation upon Mithril Hall. Despite valiant resistance, the dragon's onslaught claimed thousands of lives, including Bangor and Garnum Battlehammer. The surviving dwarves, numbering around 300, sought refuge on the surface, awaiting news of victory that never arrived. Mithril Hall, once home to over 10,000 dwarves, was reduced to a mere fraction of its former population. South of Mithril Hall lies Settlestone, an ancient village notable for being one of the rare dwarven settlements constructed entirely above ground. Serving as a public facade and strategic outpost for the inhabitants of Mithril Hall, the dwarves used it as a base of operation to manage traffic in the area and safeguard the vicinity from marauding monsters. The site features robust structures formed from massive rock slabs that are meticulously arranged. These resilient edifices endured the passage of time and remained standing for centuries, even long after the village's abandonment. In the year negative 2100, Illuskan refugees made up of liberated human populations made their initial migration to Icewind Dale, where they settled and eventually gave rise to the original ragged men barbarian tribes. Over time, these tribes were joined by a few Northlanders who ventured northward along the Sword Coast in their long ships. The Ragged Men, also referred to as the Ragged Barbarians or the Men of the Tundra, are the nomadic tribes inhabiting Icewind Dale. They endure a harsh existence amidst the unforgiving terrain between the Ragged Glacier and the Sea of Moving Ice. These tribes are governed by kings each leading one of several distinct factions, such as the Tribe of the Elk, the Tribe of the Wolf, the Tribe of the Bear, the Tribe of the Tiger, the Tribe of the Seal, and the Tribe of the Caribou. Ragged men are notably tall, often reaching heights of seven feet, with blue eyes and fair hair ranging from blonde to red or light brown. Their way of life revolves around migratory hunting and reindeer herding across the icy tundra, they dwell in deerskin tents and fashion tools and artifacts from wood and whalebone. Their language, Rigedjik, is unique to their culture, and like many of their ilk, they harbor distrust towards magic, viewing it as a tool of malevolence and sloth. Many centuries before the era of upheaval, Arakan the Archmage launched a campaign to conquer the region with his mercenary army. In a brutal onslaught lasting weeks, Arakan inflicted devastation upon the Uthgart and Ragged Men tribes, enslaving and slaughtering their people. However, a warrior shaman named Gerard rallied the remaining tribes together, and they repelled the mercenary forces. Faced with imminent defeat, Arakan resorted to desperate measures, summoning a horde of demons from the lower plains through a portal. In a sacrificial act of heroism, Gerard hurled himself into the portal sacrificing his life to prevent the fiends from engulfing Icewind Dale and saving his people from annihilation. In the ensuing years, Kresselak, the Black Wolf, emerged as a formidable leader among the barbarian tribes of Icewind Dale. Despite his ruthless campaign of conquest, which claimed many lives, Kresselak succeeded in uniting the tribes under a single kingdom for a brief period. The Ragged Men venerate tribal beast spirits and Tempos, the god of war, with reverence. Shamans who hold the utmost respect for their tribal beast totems serve Tempos. These totems are revered as powerful spirits akin to those honored by the Uthgart barbarians, although unlike their counterparts, Ragged Men shamans lack the ability to summon beastly powers. Icewind Dale, situated in the frozen far region of the north, stands as the northernmost explored territory in Faerun. Its name comes from the relentless icy winds that characterize its landscape. Geographically, it lies to the south and east of the trackless sea, north of the upper sword coast and the spine of the world mountains, and west of the Regged Glacier. Within the dale, the prominent Kelvin's Cairn Mountain overlooks Bremen's Run Valley, while access primarily comes 
via the northern means, a road extending from the coastal city of Lusken. The climate of Icewind Dale is predominantly Arctic, with freezing temperatures prevailing for much of the year. Summer months bring mild temperatures, while winter months plunge to bone-chilling lows. Relentless snowfall occurs, though much of it is carried eastward to the Regat Glacier. Nights are prolonged, offering little sunlight, especially during severe winters. The winds from the Regat Glacier relentlessly assail Icewind Dale, penetrating every crevice and barrier, draining warmth from even the sturdiest shelters. The sun offers little relief from winter's onslaught, leaving days dim and nights dark. Storms bring hail and sleet, encasing everything in ice and obstructing trails to warmer lands. To the east, the Regate Glacier's icy cliffs tower like prison walls, while to the south, the snow-capped peaks of the spine of the world dominate the landscape. To the north and west, a sea of moving ice churns with its deadly formations. Icewind Dale boasts a rich array of wildlife, featuring creatures like hares, arctic foxes, reindeer, and elk, all finely adapted to endure the severe cold. Larger predators, such as crag cats, mammoths, polar bears, saber-toothed tigers, snowy owl bears, and formidable yetis roam the snow-covered terrain. In addition to the wild animals, Icewind Dale harbors packs of scavenging knolls and voracious ice trolls. Flora in the region also offers unique specimens, with various plants from the region being traded across Faerun for their properties. There are also a native species of carrion flesh-eating bees, which are utilized to produce a favored local beverage. Among the most remarkable fauna, the knucklehead trout is an exclusive species inhabiting the three lakes of Icewind Dale. Notoriously hard-headed, these fish are prized for their immense strength, posing a challenge to fishermen who attempt to catch them with nets or lines. Male knucklehead trout can be about half the weight of a human, while females are typically a bit smaller. Their bones resemble ivory and are highly valued for the scrimshaw artistry, crafting elegant carvings and sculptures in demand in the affluent markets of Faerun. The Ten Towns, a collection of frontier villages in Icewind Dale, formed around the three lakes of the region. Redwaters, Loch Dinashere, and Meyer Dwalden around the 11th century. Linked by a rugged road known as the Ten Road, these settlements stretch from the ocean of the Sword Coast to the spine of the world. The Ten Towns draw individuals from across Faerun seeking new beginnings or escape from their past lives. While each community promotes diligence and collaboration, intertown relations reveal the fierce competition necessary for survival in the north. The economy of the Ten Towns relies heavily on fishing and the sale of knucklehead trout, along with scrimshaw crafted from their bones. This industry sustains the town's livelihoods, with each settlement maintaining its fleet of fishing vessels. Apart from fishing, certain towns have alternative revenue streams. For instance, Lonelywood is the only location in the region where logging occurs, thus the lumber source there holds significant value. In settlements scattered across Icewind Dale, whale oil holds significant importance as a commodity. Given the scarcity of wood, it has emerged as the preferred fuel for heating homes and hearths. Consequently, whaling ventures across the Sea of Moving Ice are one of the region's most lucrative industries. Among the distinctive natural resources of Icewind Dale is a mineral called chardolin. This unique stone possesses the remarkable ability to absorb magical energy, which is then released upon being crushed or destroyed. The government of the Ten Towns is overseen by the Council of Ten Towns, a body comprising representatives from each town, commonly known as the Speakers. These are chosen based on their influence and leadership. The Council holds authority in making official decisions for all the towns. Despite its purpose of fostering collaboration and support, the harsh competitive nature necessary for survival gives rise to tensions and rivalries between them. Each town vies to secure prime fishing locations and favorable trade agreements, leading to frequent disputes. Notwithstanding these challenges, 
the Council of Ten Towns plays a vital role in upholding order and stability in the region. It serves as a platform for peacefully resolving many of these conflicts and coordinating unified responses to external threats. The people of the Ten Towns are tough and suspicious of outsiders. They have a history of bloody battles against barbarians and tyrants, which has made them resilient and cautious. The harsh environment they live in has shaped their character, and they view visitors as potential trouble. Many of the residents are fugitives from warmer lands, and they've had to develop a tough mentality to survive here. Travel throughout the Dale is extremely treacherous and predominantly occurs via dog sled or snowshoeing, though some opt to ride on indigenous axe beaks. Axe beaks are formidable flightless birds native to various regions and the realms like Icewind Dale and are recognized by their sharp, wedge-shaped beaks. With robust necks and powerful legs, they are capable of surpassing horses in speed. They exhibit aggressive tendencies towards unfamiliar beings and sustain themselves on a carnivorous diet. Most travelers arriving in Icewind Dale typically make their first stop at Bryn Shander, a fortified town nestled atop a desolate, windswept hill. The town's defenses consist of towering walls constructed with two concentric rings of upright wooden poles filled with earth and debris. The outer ring extends above the wall's height, providing a platform for defenders patrolling the wood-planked walkway. The sturdy gates are reinforced with iron bands and can be secured from within using heavy wooden beams. They're typically closed after dusk, a precaution given the frequent darkness that envelops the region. In Bryn Shander, the central hub is the Speaker's Palace, home to the town's leader. It functions as the administrative center and a gathering place for the town council. Locals and visitors alike frequent the North Look Inn, a cozy tavern known for its warm atmosphere, hearty food, and opportunity for sharing stories. Bryn Shander's Market Square is a lively center of commerce, drawing traders from across Icewind Dale who offer a variety of goods such as food, clothing, weapons, and essentials. The main thoroughfare leading to Bryn Shander's Eastern Gate is known as the East Way, flanked by shops including a blacksmith, general store, and herbalist. It serves as a convenient stop for travelers to replenish their provisions. The Temple of Tempest, dedicated to the God of War, holds significance as both a place of worship and a training ground for warriors. It also provides healing services for those in need. Another of the ten towns, known as Bremen, distinguishes itself by its absence of defensive walls. A shop known as Buried Treasures caters to adventurers and travelers, offering essential supplies and valuable discoveries found by treasure hunters in Icewind Dale. The Five Tavern Center is a part of town that hosts a remarkable concentration of taverns, fostering a vibrant social scene. These taverns provide a cozy refuge from the cold and serve as gathering spots for exchanging news, gossip, and daring exploits. Kyr Dineval is mainly defined by the castle that casts a formidable shadow over daily life. The castle is central to the town's layout and has reinforced a social hierarchy here that is not present across the rest of the ten towns. Dinev's Rest is the name of the local inn, and the uphill climb is the only tavern which is frequented by the locals. Karakonek is a small settlement even by the standards of the ten towns residing near Karadinaval. It has a shop called Hook, Line, and Sinker, which serves both a tavern and an inn, as well as a shop called Frozen Far Expeditions, which caters to adventurers and explorers. Dugan's Hole is the smallest among the ten towns in Icewind Dale, with the residents unaccustomed to visitors. The Twenty Stones of Thrun is a peculiar landmark, comprising a circle of ancient megaliths. It stands as one of the few prominent features in this otherwise austere settlement. It holds significance as a touchstone of historical and cultural heritage, drawing interest from both residents and visitors curious about the region's ancient past. East Haven distinguishes itself with its thriving fishing industry, which serves as the backbone of its economy and cultural identity. It's renowned for its industrious populace and the daunting trials 
they confront amidst the icy waters and creatures lurking within. The East Haven Ferry is a feat of engineering excellence and is a vital conduit for transportation across Loch Denesheri, facilitating trade and passage between East Haven and neighboring settlements around the lake. The Wet Trout is a tavern that acts as a communal heart for the fishing town. The White Lady Inn is another cornerstone, providing lodging and local gossip. Its moniker is a nod to the spectral legend that shrouds East Haven. The White Lady is a spectral entity that appears over Lake Denisheria and certain locations within the ten towns of Icewind Dale. Although some in the town of East Haven regard her as a mere curiosity, she harbors a sinister and malevolent nature. When she materializes in her physical form, the White Lady takes on the appearance of a thin, gaunt woman with flowing white hair. Those who draw near to her spectral presence will witness her visage transform into that of a malevolent, grinning skull. The White Lady can be summoned through a seance, where she will answer three questions before vanishing temporarily. Her responses often manifest by writing in frost on the windows of her namesake inn, or by briefly possessing the form of the seance leader. If her ethereal form is destroyed, the White Lady spirit simply returns to Lac Donashiri. However, when she appeared before those present at the seance, she will attempt to possess them and compel themselves to drown within the icy waters of the lake. Although she rarely appears on land, the White Lady will sometimes take on the guise of a captive woman within the East Haven Town Hall. In this form, she will masquerade as an innocent victim bound to a ship's figurehead car from Chardolin in the shape of a demon. Legend has it that the White Lady was once a mortal woman married to a miserly man who met his demise in Lake Denishere, taking his wealth down with him. However, the White Lady herself has no recollection of her own death or that of her husband. The town of Goodmead garners a claim for its honeyed mead, a comforting elixir that not only stays off the chill during the interminable nights, but also stands as a prized export, drawing merchants from afar. Serving as the heart of the community, the Mead Hall plays host to gatherings, festivities, and shared meals. The Shrine of the Flaming Sword is a sanctuary dedicated to the revered deity. Lonelywood draws sustenance from the abundant yet hazardous resources of the surrounding woodlands. It also hosts the Happy Scrimshander, a haven for the craft of Scrimshaw, where the intricate carvings from the sea creature's bones and tusks are crafted. The tavern there is known as the Lucky Liar. Renowned for its robust maritime heritage, Targos flourishes through fishing and trade, with its harbor serving as a vital artery for economic sustenance. The town's impressive fortifications and well-trained militia stand as a bulwark against the myriad threats of the Icewind Dale. The inn is known as the Luskin Arms, and the tavern is known as Three Flags Sailing. There's also an emporium known as Triglio, catering to the needs of adventurers and fishermen, offering a diverse array of gear and provisions. Termalane is renowned for its gem mines. The tavern there is known as the Blue Clam, and the mining district is known as Eastside. Icewind Dale kobolds are a unique subspecies that have evolved to thrive in the unforgiving cold of Icewind Dale. They primarily inhabit the mountainous terrain of the region. They are known to be particularly hardy compared to other kobold variations. One of their distinct characteristics is their inclination to seek out and pledge allegiance to white dragons. Additionally, there have been documented instances of Icewind Dale kobolds forming alliances or interactions with other species, such as a group of kobolds residing on a rock formation along the southern shore of Redwaters who befriended a frost giant exile. An orc community situated in Icewind Dale known as the Green Moss Tribe originated from two distinct factions driven into the region from the south of the spine of the world. The initial faction comprised followers of Aurel, the goddess of winter. Originally hailing from Silvery Moon, a city renowned for its magical power and artistic endeavors, they were led by the High Lady Illustrial Silverhand, a prominent wizard among the Seven Sisters. However, their association with the Frost Maiden, 
a mysterious aspect of Oral, led to their exile from Silvery Moon. A second faction consisted of the Ondantus, pacifist orc tribe devoted to Eldoth, the goddess of peace and tranquil places. Unlike conventional orc tribes, the Ondantus adhered to pacifism, which led to their expulsion by more warlike orc factions. In the harsh environments of Icewind Dale, these two groups have consolidated into the Green Moss tribe. They're known for their knowledge of the local flora and often trade with the inhabitants of Silvery Moon. Aurel is commonly depicted as a slender, alluring human figure with blue-hued skin, her form crafted from ice and snow, accentuated by long, flowing white hair. Among her various manifestations, she assumes the persona of the Frost Maiden. Throughout the annals of the Forgotten Realms, Aurel aligned herself with the malevolent deities of nature, such as Talos, the god of storms, and Humberly, the goddess of the sea. This alliance fortified her position during the Time of Troubles, a period where all gods were rendered mortal. Harl's history is fraught with strife, fury, and retribution. Her followers, distinguished by the emblem of a snowflake, are hardy individuals who have endured harsh winters under her patronage, acquiring proficiency in ice magic as a result. However, there are instances when Aurel's power wanes, rendering her vulnerable. An array of beings pay homage to Aurel, including druids, avarials, elemental archons, fey, frost giants, denizens of frigid climates, rangers, spurgens, and boers or winter hags. She holds significant influence in the region of Tyres, with most Tyre clerics venerating the Frost Maiden. Her overreaching ambition is to impose perfect stasis upon the world, akin to a pristine ice sculpture, admired eternally for its beauty. Should this necessitate the obliteration of all life by casting the world into perpetual darkness, so be it. Mortals, in her view, are capricious agents of change devoid of a place in her immaculate, crystalline realm. The Caves of Hunger are located within a massive glacier in Icewind Dale, and there are a sprawling labyrinth of tunnels and chambers. Within the caves, ancient horrors reside that have been lying dormant for millennia. One notable feature is a golem laboratory, suggesting that the caves may have served as an arcane workshop of sorts. Additionally, the caves are home to vampire kobolds, cursed by dark energies within. At the deepest point in the caves lies the fallen Netheril city of Ithran. The submerged ruins are regarded as little more than a tomb for the ancient Netherees, full of deadly magic awaiting anyone who seeks its arcane secrets. The necropolis is known to carry a form of magical disease known as the Arcane Blight, which slowly transforms living humanoids into Nothics. Nothics are lanky, hunched, olive-green-skinned humanoids with a single, enormous red central eye. Their long arms are tipped with claws, which drag along the ground as they move in an awkward hop. They are utterly insane and almost as evil, capering and gibbering in and out of combat for no apparent reason. They are known to live in underground ruins and caverns as solitary predators and sometimes serve more powerful creatures that find their erratic behavior amusing. Around the time of the year of the moat, 1269, Damien Morianus, a former master of the North Tower of the Host Tower of the Arcane, made his way to Icewind Dale. A formidable necromancer, Morianus conducted horrifying experiments on the local barbarian tribes ultimately seeking revenge on his enemies by summoning demons. These infernal creatures unleashed hellfire, causing a catastrophic event known as the Great Thaw. This thaw resulted in devastating floods and the melting of permafrost, claiming the lives of a barbarian tribe and the inhabitants of the accursed tower which sank into the mud. Although most locals believe it to be a natural occurrence, few know the true nature of this disaster. Just over a decade later, in the year of the Cold Soul, 1281, the devil Belhifet attempted to conquer Icewind Dale after being freed from his icy prison by the malevolent artifact, the Krenshinabon. Belhifet sought to raise an army 
and claim the region for himself. While he briefly froze over the settlement of East Haven, he was ultimately banished back to Avernus by a group of courageous adventurers. During the same year, the barbarian lord Wildefane, claiming to be the reincarnation of the legendary Uthgard hero Jerrod, rallied the tribes against the Ten Towns, believing they had wrongfully taken barbarian lands. Secretly possessed by the vengeful spirit of the white dragon Ikasarokt, Wildefane led his forces in battles against the warriors of the Ten Towns and the dwarves of Clan Battlehammer. Diplomatic efforts failed, leading to Wildefane's demise at the hands of adventurers. In the year of the Griffin, 1312, a monstrous army was marshaled in Icewind Dale by the offspring of the fiend Belhafet. The Cambians Iser and Maide established the Legion of the Chimera, comprising monstrous half-breed creatures who converged at the Severed Hand Fortress. Engaging in numerous battles with the militias of the Ten Towns, the Legion met its end at the hands of a group of mercenaries. In 1351, Hiefstag and his band of barbarians attempted to conquer the settlement of Termalane during their expansive sweep of the Ten Towns, but were ultimately unsuccessful. Concurrently, the long-lost Kren Shinnabon resurfaced when discovered by Akar Kessel, an apprentice wizard of the Arcane Brotherhood hailing from Luskan. Over the ensuing years, Kessel amassed an army of goblinoids, trolls, and giants, forming an alliance with the demon lord Ertu. Five years later, in the Year of the Worm, Kessel, now styled as the Tyrant of Icewind Dale, launched a campaign to conquer the entire region. However, his plans were thwarted by adventurers known as the Companions of the Hall, the Dwarves of Clan Battlehammer, and the United Forces of the Ten Towns in a monumental clash known as the Battle of Icewind Dale. During this conflict, the Kren Shinnabon was destroyed, unleashing its malevolent demonic magic upon the chartal and ore of Icewind Dale. Following the defeat of Akar Kessel's army, several powerful individuals vied for supremacy in the region. Among them were Jarl Uttar Kelvinson, a deranged beholder known as Hagdorn, and even Levistus, the Prince of Stygia in the Nine Hells. For many years, the Regged Men maintained a hostile stance towards the residents of the Ten Towns, frequently launching raids against them. As Akar Kessel was building his army, the king of the tribe of the Elk, known as Hiefstag, forged an alliance with him. Fortunately, a barbarian named Wolfgar challenged and defeated Hiefstag, subsequently assuming leadership of the tribes. Under Wolfgar's guidance, the 50 surviving Regged Men joined forces with the Ten Towns, repelling Kessel's invading forces and temporarily settling within the towns, seeking respite from the harsh northern wilderness. The survivors primarily settled in Bremen and Kerr Koenig, while others ventured to the abandoned dwarven site of Settlestone. By the late 15th century, the tribes of the Wolf and Tiger struggled to eke out their existence on the tundra. During the winter of the year of the Iron Dwarf's Vengeance, 1485, the tribe of the Tiger sought refuge in Bremen, but were denied by wary townsfolk, leading them to camp on the northwest shore of Mayer's Walden where they faced relentless attacks from beasts. Meanwhile, the tribe of the Wolf sought shelter near Ironmaster, but suffered losses, including their king, during the journey. In contrast, the Elk and Bear tribes experienced relative prosperity, although the latter did fall under Arl's influence, adopting exclusive worship of the Frost Maiden. Ever since leaving his home as a young dwarf, Bruinor Battlehammer harbored a deep desire to reclaim Mithril Hall and seek vengeance for his kin. After spending numerous years residing in the clan's new abode in Icewind Dale, the venerable and esteemed Bruinor resolved that the time had come to embark on the journey back to Mithril Hall. Although his intention to return had always been steadfast, the decision to commence his quest in 1365 was spurred by the completion of forging Aegis Fang Accompanied by Drizzt Duorden, Rages, and Wolfgar, who later came to be known as the Companions of the Hall, Brunor set out on an arduous expedition to locate it. The journey proved lengthy, with even Brunor himself having forgotten many details regarding its whereabouts. Eventually, though, through a combination of rumors, 
lose, and a memory-inducing potion, they managed to trace its location to Settlestone, then known as the Ruins, where they spent the night before continuing their journey towards Fourth Peak Mountains along the narrow path. En route, they encountered trouble with another group, comprising a golem created by Dendibar, his apprentice Sidney, and Artemis Entreri, an assassin tasked with tracking down Regis and the magical ruby he possessed. Accompanying Entreri was Katabri, Bruinor's adopted human daughter. After nearly a full day of traveling, they reached Keeper's Dale, but were unable to open the hidden door due to their lack of knowledge of the ancient command. They waited until the following day, utilizing the magic of Aegis Fang to unveil the door and progress further in their quest. Upon entering the complex, they began navigating the intricate tunnels, where they stumbled upon the dusty remains of Bangor and Garum Battlehammer, Bruno's father and grandfather. After laying them to rest and donning Bangor's armor, Brunor declared himself the eighth king of Mithril Hall. Eventually, they encountered Shimmergloom, who emerged in Garm's gorge. Faced with no other recourse, Brunor doused himself in oil, leapt onto Shimmergloom, and ignited them both, plummeting into the abyss in a blaze of glory. In the aftermath, Regis was abducted, and the bridge across the gorge was destroyed, forcing Drizzt, Wolfgar, and Kazibri to navigate around the chasm to reach the eastern exit, presuming Bruinor had perished. However, Bruinor miraculously survived his fiery descent, saved by Drizzt's magical sword, Icing Death. Emerging from the dragon's carcass, he proceeded to purge Mithril Hall of Shimmergloom's minions, dispatching numerous Dwergar as he traversed the tunnels. Eventually, he escaped the complex by scaling a furnace chimney where he encountered and defeated a giant spider, though not without being bitten. As the venom coursed through his veins, Brunor succumbed to unconsciousness upon reaching the surface. He awoke under the care of Alistril's Silverhand, who had rushed to his aid upon foreseeing his plight. With Mithril Hall liberated from the dragon and its minions, it became habitable once more. Many dwarves of Clan Battlehammer departed from the dwarven valley of Icewind Dale to resettle within the ancient halls. In the year 1358, an army consisting of drow, goblins, and kobolds under the leadership of House Bainray launched an assault on Mithril Hall from Menzo Barzan. The defending dwarves were swiftly aided by deep gnomes from Blingdenstone, local barbarians from Settlestone, led by Berthgar the Bold, reinforcements from Nesme under the command of Galen Firth and the Knights of Silver, alongside the enigmatic Harpels of Longsaddle. At one crucial juncture, the wizard Illustrial intervened to deter the attackers. Following several days of fierce combat, the malevolent forces, including the Drow and their allies, were ultimately vanquished and driven back to their shadowy depths. During the Battle of Keeper's Dale, Bruinor and his fellow companions of the Hall liberated Condaluke Battlehammer from a potent spell that had enslaved him to Bainray. In 1362, Bruinor relinquished his throne to Gondaluke, the original founder of Mithril Hall, appointing him as both the first and ninth king of the Hold. However, Gondaluke passed away a few years later, presumably succumbing to old age, as the enchantment that had preserved his youth had faded. Subsequently, Bruinor, along with several hundred dwarves, returned to Icewind Dale, and he resumed his reign as now the tenth king of Mithril Hall in 1370. In that same year, King of Bolt Mini Arrows orchestrated an assault on the Hall with a vast army of orcs originating from the spine of the world. The ensuing conflict spanned several years, resulting in numerous battles and skirmishes that inflicted considerable devastation and casualties on both sides. In 1372, Illustrial intervened once more to defend Mithril Hall. The Treaty of Garum's Gorge was established in 1372 to bring an end to the protracted and bloody conflict between Brunor Battlehammer's kingdom and Opold Mini Arrow's Orcish Horde. Signed at Garum's Gorge, the treaty endured for many years, still remaining in effect as of 1479. In 1473, a fierce storm ravaged Icewind Dale, 
generating a powerful wave on Loch Dinashere that obliterated the docks of East Haven, along with several ships and their crews. In 1485, a disturbing discovery was made. Corrupted Chardolin, known as Black Ice, was found. This sinister substance wielded a corruptive influence over those who handled it or came into close contact with it. Shortly thereafter, the return of Akar Kessel, now transformed into a lich, brought further turmoil to the region as he raised legions of zombified dwarves and launched relentless assaults on travelers and caravans traversing the snowy landscapes. In the year of the Star Walker's return, 1490, Icewind Dale fell under the curse of the goddess Aurel. She cast a malevolent spell, plunging the lands into perpetual darkness, denying them the light of the sun each morning. Known locally as the Everlasting Rhyme, this supernatural phenomenon has endured for at least two years, resulting in the death of plant life, the retreat of animals into hiding, and the scarcity of food. Tensions have escalated among the villages and towns of the Dale as resources have dwindled. Zardarok is the ruler of the Dwergar kingdom beneath Icewind Dale. He's an extremely paranoid individual and a strategically unimaginative ruler. He holds no true skill for conquest, but rather receives all his inspiration from his supernatural patron. He possesses an unhealthy obsession with Chardolin and does not abide the knowledge of anyone else acquiring it for themselves. It is believed his lust for the evil-infused metal is greater than the love he holds for his own family. Zardarok possesses innate spellcasting abilities typical among warlocks. He can discharge blasts of eldritch energy at will and unleash the flames of the hells against anyone that harms him. While holding court and Sunblight Fortress, Zardarok sits upon a massive throne carved from Chardolin. Within his personal quarters, he has a statuette of his patron deity, Deep Dwera, along with a platinum hookah embedded with a single star sapphire, among other riches. Zardarok encourages his loyal followers to carefully watch and spy upon one another in order to root out any conspiracies that could potentially challenge his rule. The Sunblight clan's history is one of tragedy and loss. Over the years, Zardarok married three Dwergar women, Thizrun, Iriska, and Maral, and with them he sired nine children. Nearly all of his family died, either by his hand or otherwise unfortunate circumstances. Zardarok killed his first wife, Thizrun, and their son Ulthun in retaliation for a botched assassination attempt and unsuccessful coup. Irska and the two daughters she had with Zardarok died in a cave-in. Marl and four of the Sunblight children died during a failed raid of a Mind Flayer colony. By the time he raised the fortress of Sunblight, Zardarok had two remaining sons, Durth and Nildar. Likely due to the failed patricide carried out by his eldest son, Zardarok kept him busy with missions that were far removed from court life in Sunblight. At some point during the late 15th century, Zardarok was visited by who he believed was Deep Dwera, but was in fact Asmodeus, Lord of the Nine Hells. The malevolent devil convinced Zardarok to raise an army and take dominion over the Ten Towns and all of Icewind Dale. He led his people up from their home in the Underdark to forge their own kingdom upon the surface world. When the goddess Aurel let loose the everlasting rhyme over Icewind Dale, Zardarok and the Sunblight Dwarves received exactly the boon they needed to act. This perpetual darkness has granted them the opportunity to raise the Fortress of Sunblight within the shadows of the spine of the World Mountains. In order to take dominion over Icewind Dale, Zardarok brought up a horde of monstrous creatures from the Underdark and began massing Chardolin from all across the region. He plans to use the cursed substance to construct an enormous Chardolin dragon. Icewind Dale has faced many ambitious tyrants over the centuries, yet the region has defied conquest. The rugged, often mutually hostile communities of this frozen wasteland have banded together to defeat demonic armies and reclaim ancient strongholds when their survival is at stake. The ambitions of these tyrants to forge a mighty empire in the frozen far has resulted in the ice becoming their tomb. 
Despite the curse of their lands, the inhabitants continue to search for solutions to release Icewind Dale from Arl's frozen grasp in perhaps the most wild, harsh, and unforgiving environment in the Forgotten Realms.